How goes? Doing all right. How are you? I. Uh, uh, we have electrical problems. Oh, no. Something is causing the. It's weird. It's it, it's the best kind of technical problem. It's intermittent. Which is the fun kind. Which means it won't do it when the guy's there. It's not. Um, yeah, it's been causing the lights. In, it's only in certain rooms. Not in the whole house. Just certain rooms. To dim down and our uh, battery backups to kick in for a few seconds. And then it goes back. And we can't predict why. We don't know what's doing it. I'm hoping it's just a bad circuit breaker or something. Because that would be easy to fix relatively. All things considered. But. Uh, hmm? It's ghosts. That's it, Terry. Yes, of course. It's ghosts. That's that's the. Uh... Well, you know what? If it actually was ghosts, that'd still be bad. It's still expensive. I suppose it'd cost me like a thousand dollars to take care of ghosts. If there, if that was such a thing, they would charge you out the f- balls to take care of a, of a ghost. I don't know. I feel like the Winchesters worked pretty cheap. Okay, but yet yeah, you also forget the fact that they were kind of um, criminals. <laughs> oh, so we want to like deal with the ghosts through the government? <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> If I can get a certified electrician, I think I can get a licensed ghost hunter, okay? Okay. okay. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Airlines, but the worldwide interwebs find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And, um,. It happened again because this stuff, of course, keeps I'm happening again and again. again. So All this has happened before and will happen again. <sighs> Only time is a flat circle. You got to appreciate sometimes Hi. these kids, the, the brazenness of this one is to be commended. Um, I, I, I admire this kid's moxie, let's say. Uh, boy, oh, 11, found driving BMW towing caravan on the M1. Holy crap. Your old boy was found behind the wheel when police pulled over a BMW X5 towing a suspected stolen caravan on the M1. North Yorkshire police arrested the boy on suspicion of theft, burglary, and motoring offenses, including dangerous driving. They oh, so he stole it. He stole it. Um, officers received a call uh, around 15.30 on Thursday that a caravan had been stolen from a holiday site near Thirsk. They tracked a BMW, they said, was using cloned plates heading south on the A1 said for 45 minutes after the caravan was reported stolen we stopped the vehicle on the m1 after it left the a1 the boy has been released on conditional bail with further inquiries being carried out uh police said a selection of vehicle registration plates was found when they searched the vehicle so this kid 11 years old not only is he driving a stolen car with swapped plates it's already already swift on that one. He goes to like the trailer park area and steals somebody's freaking caravan. It's a trailer. He stole a house. This, this feels like a prequel about Brad Pitt's character from the movie Snatch. <laughs> Like, this feels like the origin story for that character. Like, I'm honestly impressed at this kid. Yeah. Like, when I was 11, my biggest accomplishment was beating Super Mario Brothers 3. And this kid has got his own business. When I was 11, <laughs> I had a Statue of Liberty themed birthday party. <laughs> And we played pin the torch on the statue. 
Just, I, you have to imagine the cops pulling over the BMW and their reaction yeah. is like, what? Like, like, they're definitely not expecting an 11 year old. Like, a, like, four foot tall comes walking out of the car and they're like, what do we do now? I don't know. This isn't this. They didn't cover this in Hot Fuzz. Right. I don't know. <laughs> like I guess they kind of did. They did have the kids with the graffiti. I don't know. Just the kid. It's. Uh, I mean, obviously, don't steal people's uh, caravan. It's not like a, it's a, it's a holiday house. Don't steal people's houses. But on the other hand, yeah, this is a smart kid. Yeah. I mean, compared to some of the other bastards on here, this kid's a criminal mastermind. He got caught. He just wanted to, he wanted to become a van life influencer. (laughs) But that shit's expensive. Oh, yeah. That would be amazing, though. I'd love to do that. Except I have cats. They'd hate it. Would you (sighs) live in a van? Down by the river. Yes. Um, They don't have bathrooms in them. Tara, if if you try hard enough, the world is your bathroom. Yeah, you can say that because you're a man. (laughs) All right. Next up, speaking of, oh, God. So there there have been a lot of since the, the the human malware hit, we have started taking a lot of uh public forums and such and moving them online. Even now, even mm. we still hold a bunch of them online because now that we've gotten used to teleconferencing, it allows for larger people more accessibility to participate. Also, we have figured out we don't really like each other that much. And this this will kind of reinforce, people in general. I mean, th- this will kind of reinforce that a lot, a lot. Um, masturbating man interrupts forum on Charlottesville jail renovation. Why is there a picture of Joe Biden in the preview? I don't know. That's not the guy. Okay, because uh. Whew. That should be a bigger story. Kind of impressed if he was. That's some stamina for 80 years old. Um, Yeah. A contentious community forum on provost renovations to Charlottesville's jailhouse got off to a rocky start Thursday evening when a participant who had joined virtually via Zoom appeared to be vigorously masturbating on camera. 20 minutes, 20 minutes into the hybrid meeting, those attending in person at Carver Recreation Center noticed unusual sounds, including moans coming from the speaker of the computer being used to broadcast the session to the virtual audience. This is going to get even better. Bless your heart. For those attending in person, the only thing to be seen on, on screen was Coomer's PowerPoint presentation. But in an effort to identify and put a stop to the mysterious sounds, uh, the slideshow was minimized, revealing the faces of those attending virtually. Among them was a man with dark hair seen in front of a camera, completely naked and masturbating. You Bless, didn't think that through for you. Bless his heart. Kumar immediately sprang into action, rushing to the front of the room and throwing his hands over the portion of the projection screen in an attempt to block the image. But the video was coming from a projector, and instead of rocking the image view, he only projected onto the sleeve of his jacket. This is like a terrible episode of Parks and Rec. (laughs) What was this meeting about? Renovating jail? Jail renovations. Who who thinks that's hot? <laughs> who? <laughs> like, who is the person? And what was the order of operations here? Like, did you not decide to attend your local government meeting and then get worked up? 
Uh, or did you get worked up and then decide to attend your local government mailing? And which one is worse? The best part about this article is that uh, Cal Carey at the Daily Progress attempts their damnedest to circle back around and go back to the actual topic of the meeting and try to do some real reporting after, you know, the masturbating thing. <laughs> I mean, there is a word count to deal with. He's like, damn it, I'm there to do my job. I'm a serious reporter. <laughs> I'm did just, they find out who the person was? Or? I they have they didn't say they did kick them from the call, obviously, but <laughs> just the poor guy up there was blocking it with his and then suddenly his, there's a guy jerking off on his clothes. Ew, 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 ew. <laughs> he tried. This is if Parks and Rec was on HBO, this is what it would look like. And Jedi says, does this count as a filibuster? I mean, I don't know oh. if you can do it for that long. <laughs> well, it's, well, Tara, they try. It's called edging. You shouldn't Google that. Um, <laughs> all right. Next. I know what edging is. I'm cool. <laughs> I'm hip. I'm with it. Ducka, 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 ducka. So uh, next up, um, I just want to stress that Lucky the kid didn't get hurt, which is already a horrible thing to have to say before we start a story. I don't like the segue from the last story into this. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So. What a problem, obviously, you're raising a kid is your kid gets bullied. That that's crap, and you got to deal with it. But you have to understand you are not allowed to take direct action against the bully. That is not your kid. No. And you are especially not allowed to take direct action against a bully by way of a plot from fucking little monsters. And a few people will know that movie. You know what I'm talking about there. Texas mother arrested and accused of mixing drink that sent son's classmate to hospital. Texas woman's been arrested after her son's alleged bully was sent to the hospital having consumed an intentionally mixed sports drink. Jennifer Lynn Rossi, 45, mixed lemon, salt and vinegar into a sports drink bottle to quote prevent her son's drink from being stolen at school by other students but then your son's gonna drink that no no, no the kid was in on it oh, okay so it was, was a decoy it's a decoy yeah her 10 year old son handed the bottle to another boy during pe class tuesday it said he experienced nausea and a headache shortly after he drank the mix con mixed concoction. Uh, concoction. Deputies were then called to the Legacy Traditional School in Alamo Ranch for the sick child. Although lemon, salt, and vinegar are non-toxic, the incident resulted in the victim being hospitalized, needing additional monitoring. Uh, when the school principal contacted Rossi, she admitted to, quote, intentionally mixing the contents of the drink after having heard from, from her son that the victim, quote, stole his drink and was bullying him. Hey. Son recounted Don't be a bully. written statement that you'll his, drink vinegar. <laughs> the son recounted a written statement that his prime drink went missing during recess the day before, and the victim quote said he had kept it and kept bragging about it. After he went home and told Ross about the incident, she quote had an idea to prank the alleged bully, and he quote did what he was told by his mother. Because he's ten. Yeah. He's not, he's not going to make great decisions. He's 10. I mean, as you guys put it out, that's basically just, just uh, pickle juice. I, yes, but you have to understand one of the, th the, the really dangerous thing you did here is you don't know what that kid's allergic to. 
Yeah. You, citrus allergy. Also, is depending common. on the drink, you have mixed pickle juice, like and like maybe Gatorade, which is loaded with sugar and also has a high salt content. Yeah. You're you're, you're screwing it's, with the kid. It's very concerning to me how many of the people in the chat are like, "Little fucking kid had it coming." Like you don't know if if this kid had like a citrus allergy, we wouldn't be talking about this story because he'd be dead. Right. But also. When you're a when you're a big person, mm -hmm. when you're a grown up, you're not supposed to take revenge on children. And you're especially fine. Maybe maybe the kid's a little shit. Mm. Okay, but you at 45 years old, mm -hmm. at the big age of 45, it's it's not okay for you to avenge on a 10 year old because that you don't do shit to someone else's child that is a huge no no that is a great don't do no -no. shit to your child either no, by the way but yeah it's it's that's that's uh... i really need y'all to stop defending this yeah right for frick's sake you don't you don't know what you're doing when you mess with this crap also it's just you're supposed to be the grown-up You're supposed to be more mature and know how to deal with the and like, fine. A lot of people were bullied as children and probably still have trauma from it. But that doesn't mean that you get to become the bully. Yeah, you're you're against someone. Y'all in the chat, you're kind of three times younger than you. You're kind of concerning me about the stuff you might do to other children. And that's to, to small right? children. And that's like. Okay. Uh okay. Okay. Uh as a grown up, sometimes the only thing that works is a slice of I oh my god. This is I think we just need to move on because the chat. Y'all are gonna be on my right show now. someday. Right? Y'all are gonna be on my show someday. I'll see you here. Thanks for really providing me content. I hope none of you have kids. Yeah. And no one is defending the bully, by the way. No one's saying this kid isn't a little shit. <laughs> it's entirely possible that the bully is a little shit. You just, you don't but try that to this make isn't, the little shit this isn't, shit himself. That's not right. This isn't how you deal with that. Something's wrong with y'all. Something's seriously fucking wrong with y'all. All right. Moving on to Massachusetts, there are, I guess you would call them honorable idea of a crime. Like if you get caught robbing a bank or something that, that uh, people, other criminals are like, yeah, you get this, this fucking, yeah, we, we get it. I can only imagine trying to tell this story, you know, at the Thieves Guild or whatever. Uh... <laughs> Because it didn't quite go how he thought it was going to go. Which is always the best ones. Um, man arrested after robbing Amazing Intimate Essential Store in Northboro, Massachusetts. And when I say robbing, I mean freaking gun. Man accused of robbing an adult. Speaking of the Winchesters. <laughs> man accused of robbing an was he Was he a giant teddy bear? <laughs> man accused of robbing an adult store in Northboro, Massachusetts late Thursday was arrested after hours of negotiations as he hid in a wooded area. Hours of negotiation. Okay. Police were called at 10.30 p.m. to the amazing Intimate Essential Store at 15 Belmont Street for a report of a robbery. That's a great name. Amazing Intimate Essential Store, yeah. Uh, store clerks confronted the man as he was allegedly trying to steal merchandise. Uh, the man allegedly showed a gun threatened the workers, and fled the area. So already, you've tried to steal from the adult store. And I have to put the emphasis on tried here. Because if they had caught you and confronted you, you could have just left at that point. 
Yeah. And you would have been, all right, you got me. Screw it. I'll go find another place with dildos. There's, there's got to be another one. But no, the minute you showed them the gun, you've graduated to, to assault. That is, is. Yep. And now, shoplifting is a crime, but it's one you can kind of walk away from these days, believe it or not. Assault. And on technically, the other hand, if, if you leave without actually stealing anything, you haven't committed a crime. Right. Trying to steal isn't a crime. If you put the shit down and leave. Northboro officer spotted a man matching the suspect's description walking along Lawrence Street. Despite commands to stop, the man, who was unidentified, fled into nearby woods. Northboro police, in coordination with Westboro, Shrewsbury, and the Massachusetts State Police, established a perimeter in the Route 9 and Lord Street area. They established at three different, four different police departments, established a perimeter for an incompetent dildo thief. Utilizing drone units from the Northboro and Westboro Police Departments. Well, was... if I'm correct, if I'm, I think Massachusetts has pretty tight gun laws. Yeah. So it's not about the robbing the shop, it's the pulling the gun on somebody. I know, but we still do have the dildos involved here. At this yeah. point, yes, you have flashed a gun, but you flashed a gun because you were a failed dildo thief. Not even a dildo fair, thief. You are a failed. He might have wanted. He might have wanted adult diapers or a flashlight. Fair, fair, yeah, yeah. We don't know that it was dildos. Uh, Could have been all kinds of kinky shit. They brought utilizing drone units. The man was found hiding in a wooded area near Walmart. <laughs> the man's what if? What if he had like a humiliation or exhibitionist kink? You're all just feeding it. <laughs> Maybe that's why the negotiations took out. Well, no. Uh, negotiations would take about 20 minutes. <laughs> edging, Tara. Edging. <laughs> the man surrendered after several hours of negotiation. It was taken into custody at the time of his arrest. A replica firearm and a double-edged knife were found in his possession. Not even a real gun! Not even Bro. a real gun. But it's still armed robbery. Yeah. That's still armed robbery, even if it isn't a real oh, gun. Bro, jail is going to be humiliating for you. I hope you have a humiliation kink. If the tomato in the channel, uh, if the interrogation takes longer than four hours, <laughs> this is all of the mistakes were made. This is the day you woke up and failed. You just everything, everything just to start to finish. The day was a failure. Like, and like I will say, I. I used to work at Spencer Gifts. I have had to deal with people stealing sex toys from my job. Fortunately, they never pulled a gun on me. Partially because the Spencer Gifts loss prevention policy was let them take it. Yeah. And let the guys at the FYE deal with them. Because that's always what happened. <laughs> they would, they would, literally, they would steal the vibrator from us and then go to FYE to steal the batteries. And that's when they'd get caught. <laughs> It's the FYE had the alarm on the, yeah. More than once, more than <laughs> once. There's some people in the channel who don't even know what FYE is. That's been dead that long, man. I know. It's been 10 years dead, isn't it, FYE? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, Jesus. Oh, One of my friends that worked there, the FYE in my mall had big TVs on the outside of the store that played stuff out into the mall. And I knew a guy who got fired for uh, broadcasting the Buck Naked Macarena. Because he thought it would just play on the big screen what? in the store while they were doing like closing. The what? yeah, they used the Buck Naked Macarena. That was a DVD that you could buy at an, an FYE. And uh, I guess they were closing the store, and after closing, he thought it would just play on the big screen in the store, not realizing it would play on the screens outside the store. 
And uh, somebody, that was kind of a problem. Did somebody specifically have a need really, really bad to see other human beings doing the Macarena naked? That's what's... Apparently. Okay. Because it was a thing that they made to sell. Which means there, there's somebody going to buy it. Let's move on to Pennsylvania. Brings a new meaning of sweating to the oldies, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's move on to Pennsylvania for this one. Speaking of failure, everybody watches like movies and shows and thinks that the whole the arson for insurance money is a viable thing to do. But it would help. It would really help if when you're attempting a arson for the insurance money, if you knew how to set a fucking fire. Pennsylvania man accused of lighting trucks on fire for insurance money. Mifflin County, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania truck driver is accused of lighting two of his tractor trailers on fire and then trying to file an insurance claim for them. Arthur St. Clair, 30, is facing arson charges for setting a fire in one of his Peterbilt trucks to receive money from his insurance company. Around 9.45 a.m., troopers from PSP Lewison received a call of an unoccupied truck trailer fire in a parking lot. Once on the scene, troopers saw two Peterbilt trucks parked close together. They were informed by St. Clair that the black truck had been on fire and his yellow truck had interior damage. Troopers investigated the vehicle. They determined that most of the exterior damage on the, bl the black truck was to the sleeper berth area on the passenger side. According to the criminal complaint, the piece police could also tell the driver's side door was open during the fire and there was no damage in that area. After investigating the black truck, police determined the fire was intentional. The fire had started in a small compartment on the passenger side underneath the bed area. This is the one that got me. Police determined that the yellow truck's fire was also intentional and started on the top of an orange floor mat. However, it only caused a foot-by-foot -foot hole that burned through the mat and into the metal flooring. So, normally, I don't know, I can't believe I'm explaining how to do this. When you set an insurance fire, you're supposed to do it in such a way that it looks like an accident, like electrical arcing, bad wiring, uh, uh, rip, something was ripped. Something that could theoretically, like you know, the, the the wire harness under your hood, there's a spark up there, and then all the plastic of the wire caught, boom. Not the floor mat. Yeah. You don't want to just hold a lighter up to it. Because <laughs> there's things called fire investigators who will walk up and say, well, gosh, it looks like somebody just held a lighter up to it. <laughs> Oh, Sonic Gap said he was arson about. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> that's terrible. Like, it's... Speaking of police, St. Clair, told tro St. Clair told troopers he had not driven either truck for about a week. St. Clair told troopers he arrived at the scene, realized he forgot his can of cho chewing tobacco, and left. When he returned 20 minutes later, he saw smoke coming from the truck. He called 911. Troopers, however, determined the only purpose in the area uh, between 7.30 a.m. and 10, 10 a.m. with St. Clair after watching nearby surveillance footage. And the footage, police said, St. Clair can be seen arriving and getting in and out of the Nello Peterbilt multiple times, as well as going in between the two trucks before leaving the scene. Police noted that the complaint that St. Clair called 911 at 9.30 but the smoke was not visible from either truck until 9.33 a.m. So not only do you not know how to set arson fire for the insurance, your ass was on camera the entire damn time. And you didn't, you didn't think to wait until there was a fire to call. You, you just kind of assumed that fire was going to happen. Just... Thought that oh, was fire good. department. I think I think there's going to be a fire in my truck soon. So, not only are you uh, facing felony arson charges, reckless burning, explosion, risking attack, catastrophe, and false insurance claim, 
But now the entire sleeper area of that truck is fucked. And that's not cheap yeah. to fix. Yeah. I mean, the truck probably itself probably still works just fine, but you can't drive in it. Of course, the other one, you know, you're fine because the math's just got a hole in it. You'll be fine with that. And the smell's not going away. Wait, like, if you're doing it for the insurance money, and you don't know, just sell the trucks. Just sell the fucking trucks. Yeah. It sounds like you, you don't really want to do trucking anymore. <laughs> and you, you should probably just sell the trucks. I thought it would be fun because I like to play trucks when I was a kid, but it's not fun. It's not like playing trucks at all. You don't even get to bash them together. Actually, that would have been a better insurance fraud, actually. I Typically, insurance fraud is because people get into serious debt and they don't have any way out of it. So they figure fire. Fire yeah. will no, make it better. Have my drink. Fire yeah, made it good. No, it doesn't. Cut your own brake line or something. Yeah, he just he just, he just made up. it worse. You literally just made it worse. Yeah. The last one tonight is the nerve of this dipshit. Um I confess that when I am driving, I will be like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Motherfucker, fucking fucking fucking. I will fucking read a riot act to someone who can't hear me, who has no idea what it is. Just, they're just driving along like, like a fuck nut. And I'm like, yeah, man. And they, they have no idea. Like, that's the extent of it. However, that's as far as I go with it. I yeah, don't think I don't. Decide. I won't even flip people off because you never know who's a fucking psycho. I have never taken it upon myself to become a traffic vigilante. See, that's why I don't flip people off. Enforcer of good driving rammed nine cars on the motorway at 130 miles per hour. Look at the expression on that man's face. Oh, he's just. I don't know if he knows where he is. Are, are, are. <laughs> Are the other cars in the room with us right now? <laughs> a motorist who believed he was, quote, an enforcer of good driving rammed nine cars on a motorway at speeds of up to 130 miles per hour while high on drugs. Gavin irony. Ba the irony. Gavin Bathershaw Binning was driving like, quote, an absolute lunatic when he erratically. Does that man have three last names? Yes. Gavin Is this Bathurst a soap opera? Shaw Binning. Three last names. Um, he was driving like an absolute lunatic when he erratically crashed into cars on the M3 in Hampshire after taking a cocktail of alcohol, cocaine, and cannabis. I really need these people to stop mixing the uppers and the downers. For Just pick to, a direction. For up to 30 miles, the 46-year-old driver of the BMW 125 deliberately, quote, targeted what he claimed were bad motorists by shunting their vehicles and even tried to rip the wing mirror off one car. After his half-hour spree of destruction on June 16th last year, Bathurst Shaw Binning stepped out of his car and punched his fist in the air in a triumphant victory. He described the reckless ride to police as, quote, a once-in-a-lifetime moment. <laughs> really? Once-in-a-lifetime? This is well, not... Well, yeah, because you're not going to have a driver's license again after this. Sometimes you, you'll find yourself behind the wheel of a large automobile. I'm still stuck on the dude on cocaine, alcohol, and weed going 130 miles an hour bitching about other people being bad <laughs> drivers. <laughs> Amazingly, everybody was driving too slow and too fast at the same time. Like, sir, self awareness mm. is a great thing. Before getting into the car, even drinking beer as well as taking cocaine and vaping cannabis, of course, 
Um, uh, witness Abby Baker watched him jump up and down shouting, yeah, while looking at the aftermath, the damage he had caused. Miss Baker said Bathurst saw bidding, then proceeded to climb into her vehicle and say, we need to go and see Charlie. She described him as being incoherent and off his face. Following his arrest, Bathurst Shaw Benning told officers he enjoyed the experience and wished he had done it years ago. <laughs> but the, the fact that no one was seriously injured and no one was killed is a yeah. goddamn miracle. But this is exactly why I don't, I don't use my horn. I don't flip people off because people are fucking insane. And I live in a state where the gun laws are not so strict. And I'm not trying to get murdered because someone cut me off on the highway. 46 years old doing this shit. Yeah, I want to point out also, this man is a year younger than me. How? How? I look amazing. <laughs> you do. You do. How in the f how in the fuck? Man, I can bear. I get tired. The idea of doing all the drugs and driving down the highway at full speed. I'm getting sleepy just thinking about it. Listen, when they had me in chemo, they had me on so many fucking steroids. It would make your head spin because I was allergic to my chemo. That's a thing that can happen to you. Mm. So to deal with that, they just load you up with all of the goddamn steroids. I didn't sleep well. I had restless leg. My face looked like a balloon. And I did have, like, rage blackouts, like the tiniest thing. And I just, like, throw shit and scream. And still, I never went out in my little Honda Fit and decided to play Fast and Furious. <laughs> This wasn't Fast and Furious. This was Death Sport. Yeah. Jesus. Fuck it. I love that he thought that he just gets out. He's cheering about it. And he's like, we got to see my buddies. It's like, oh, man, you were in all of the trouble. Yeah. And he's just like, that was awesome. Well, not in the way you're thinking. Maybe in the more literal sense of the term. I'm sure he did inspire some all. <laughs> Miss Terry said, quote, he was tarting those whose standard of driving did not meet his expectations of driving. But the thing is, you're on so many drugs, your expectations of driving are that you have a fucking rhinoceros. <laughs> In your passenger seat, jerking <laughs> off. <laughs> My God, yeah, this... like we cannot trust your expectations. No. You're on all the drugs. Like this, because this, like, okay, Hi. you still can't walk on the keyboard. I know, I love you so much, but no. <sighs> so yes, the first thing we learned. You know, it's a weird thing. Hmm. This is this is gonna be TMI. You can go ahead and cut this out for YouTube. Hmm. When I'm at my desk, he likes to headbutt me really hard in the chest and the thing is after surgery these are completely numb <laughs> fun fact if you have a double mastectomy they, they have to take all the nerve endings out so like i'm vaguely aware that i'm being hooligan headbutted <laughs> but i have like armor now <laughs> he's trying though bless very weird heart. so i guess the, the first thing we learned this week is uh you are not cocaine Batman, I guess. No. Like, you, what, you, you are not vaping Michael Knight. What the fuck? You are not Snowflame. <laughs> it doesn't give you superpowers. Well, he thought it did. Um, we've learned that if you have the idea of committing arson for money and you don't know how stop you wouldn't think it would be that complicated to set things on fire but it is 
if you're the kind of person the complicated who, part is making it convincing if you're the kind of person who would google how to set an insurance fire don't yeah don't do either of those things hi i know i love you too we've learned it's in, it's it's possible to fuck up so bad like one day worth of fuck up can change your entire life you screwed up so many bad choices in one concentrated afternoon, one evening. The hell? Um, All right, buddy. We have learned to leave other people's kids alone. It's kind of the law. Don't don't do that. Like, I shit. didn't expect this to turn into a after school special. But y'all, seriously, you do not get to bully children, even if they're shitty children. Yeah. I just need you to take that home with you yeah. and sit with it. Um, we've learned that <laughs> if a furious masturbator shows up in your Zoom chat, disconnect him before you minimize the PowerPoint. Before. <laughs> or, you know, if... Just turn off the screen for a minute, maybe. You know how I handle the, 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 the Discord here? I've got it on two different monitors. I've got your picture here, and I've got the Discord over here. I, I, I have it separate. That's how you do it. You separate it. You don't Just in case I ever start furiously masturbating? No, but, you know. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> and finally, we've learned that Somewhere out there tonight, there's an 11 year old who has got more work ethic than all of us. I think we really need to be ashamed. There's an 11 year old that is more hardcore than you will ever be a day God in your life. Damn that kid! Like I'm, I'm sitting here like, damn. He's either going to grow up to be a supervillain, or you know, no, he's going to grow up a supervillain. Yeah, this is a supervillain. <laughs> 